each of other PEDs in addition to the ones that we've studied in other tutorials. And I just want to kind of link to those here. So first of all, we're going to talk about something called narcotic anal analgesics. What a term that is. And we can think of these really as painkillers. And I'll come back to them in a second. Analgesics. We're also going to talk today about a pumice enhancing drug which is called a peptide hormone, okay? A peptide hormone. Now, those of you that are good at your biology, you'll know that peptides are bonds um, that, that bond molecules together. But peptide, peptide hormones, we are gonna look at two examples. We're gonna look at EPO, which is called erythropoietin, and we're gonna look at HGH, which is called human growth hormone, and we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of both. Both of these have been really quite popular in recent years, and um, in particular circumstances, and we'll look at those in quite a lot of detail. And we're also going to have a look at stimulants. Stimulants are things like caffeine, amphetamine, uh, and we're going to have a look at those. And finally, although this is not a performance enhancing drug, it's a performance enhancing method, we're going to have a look at blood doping. And one thing I'll just draw out immediately is that blood doping and EPO have a lot of overlaps, not in their methodology, but in the output that they achieve. So let's start with our narcotic analgesics, if I can find the right colour. I don't think I'm going to, so I'll go for some random blue. Here we go. So our narco I think it was that one. Narcotic analgesics. What are we talking about here? Well, we are talking about painkillers. Okay. So think about um, opioid derivatives. Um, think about um, morphine as an example and derivatives of that. These are painkilling drugs. So start to think about what, how that might help. Well, first of all, they mask pain. So that's useful for a performer if, for example, they're doing something particularly painful or if they're involved in some kind of injury. And I want to specifically say that a performer could play through an injury. So imagine, let's say, a netball player who has some kind of injured sprained ankle and a really big final coming up. They may use uh, the narcotic analogies to get through that experience. So obviously that's... Um, something that you sort of want to uh, consider. And also, if we say, oops, that isn't what I meant to write. I meant to write a D. We can also say it delays operations. Okay, so if someone needs surgery on injury, they can do it till sort of like the close or at end of season, out season. Now, of course, this has negatives, as you can well imagine. So what are these negatives? And I'll sort of make them obvious that they're negatives. Well, we can say that they make the injury worse. So negative injury worse. So imagine if you've got a sprained ankle and you play in a netball match, even if you're not feeling it, it's not going to be good for your ankle, right? And overall, it's bad for one's health. Okay, bad for one's health. So playing when you're injured, pain is a useful um, is a useful feedback loop, right? I think again about your negative feedback loops in in uh, biology, but it's a, it's a really positive thing, although it hurts. It tells you to stop doing something, right? Well, we're talking about dulling and removing that. Now, EPO, EPO, erythropoietin, we want to talk about this as a peptide hormone. So the first thing is that we take this typically through injections, although I believe there are other ways, but um, typically through injections. And what EPO does, well, you might know already that erythropoiesis is the production of blood cells in the bone marrow. So erythropoietin effectively stimulates that. Uh, stimulates that process. So it increases red blood cell growth. I got the wrong pink, didn't I? So we get more red blood cells. Why would that help? We would get up arrow O2 transport. So think about your aerobic performers, your endurance cyclists, your endurance swimmers, your endurance runners. They're going to get better oxygen transport. Therefore, we're going to get the capacity to train at higher or to compete at higher intensity for longer so people athletes who have to um, participate let's say a race walk for a long period of time they can race walk faster at higher intensity for longer without that sort of negative impact of, um, of lactic acid for example which would not be sort of developing as much okay but of course there are negatives to this I mean apart from the fact that it's illegal it will increase blood pressure Okay, so we could consider this to be a precursor of hypertension, but it increases blood pressure. And of course, it's illegal. We should stress that as well. Let's look at HGH. This is what's known as human growth hormone. It kind of does what it says on the tin, right? It increases muscle mass. So not dissimilar to our steroids, really. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it will also increase things like bone growth, especially in younger people. But it has negative impacts. This... Um, Sorry, I, let me finish off with the let me finish off with the positives. That was an up arrow, believe it or not there. But also, what we'll get here is we'll get an increase up arrow, my word, in strength and power. So 
a strong forward in basketball. We could be talking about a weightlifter. We could be talking about a rugby player forward, particularly might be tempted by this. But there are negatives, folks, always. And this is considered to cause chronic liver damage. So HDH can cause the equivalent damage as alcoholism, for example. So really quite serious. Stimulants, we mentioned things like caffeine, which is legal these days, by the way, in sport. But it could also be amphetamine, which of course is illegal. So what have we got? Stimulants, they're sort of the opposite of our beta blockers. They increase alertness. So that means they would decrease things like reaction time. So let's put that, they would decrease reaction time. And when we say decrease reaction time, of course that's a positive, right? It makes you react faster. But there are negatives for this. It might lead to over arousal. In other words, we get a bit sort of hyped and do daft stuff, I suppose. We might have a loss of concentration because, you know, effectively we are over aroused arousal and decision making are closely linked and it might lead to errors by the performer okay so they're the negatives and of course it's illegal assuming it's the sort of the the amphetamine example we talked about now i'll go with red with red here blood doping so i wrote as red remember what blood doping is it is the methodology of removing blood from the body it's stored in frozen conditions. It's actually very, very hard to freeze the blood into a solid. It, it, it's freezing point, or its melting point is very, very low. But the other thing is we tend to, we tend to only re-inject um, the red blood cells mixed with, <clears throat> mixed with fluid. So effectively what we've got here, we've got the storage of blood. Once we take the blood out, the body regenerates that blood through erythropoiesis, of course, in the bone marrow. And then once we add the, the blood back in, we then have a greater number of red blood cells. So why is this a positive thing? Well, first of all, we get increased RBC growth. Okay, so we, glow, we grow red blood cells, a bit like our EPO, right? Secondly, <clears throat> we also get increase in O2 transport once it's been re-injected, and you'll see the overlap with EPO now. We'll also be able to work at higher intensity for longer. Now, if you look at the advantages there, would it surprise you to say, for me to tell you that once EPO was sort of discoverable and testable in endurance cyclist, athletes stopped using this and replaced it with this. Does that surprise you? Probably not, right? But of course, there are negatives. Athletes might experience transfusion infections. We're talking about things like HIV. We're talking about things like hepatitis. Now, obviously, those tend to happen more if needles are shared and things like this, but it could happen. We're also talking here about increased blood pressure, okay? So this could be an issue for performers as well. So there, those are our other, if you like, performance enhancing drugs that we would really like you to have an awareness of. Just to finish off this, I would talk about especially games players here. So it could be endurance athletes, I suppose, but people who sort of have to do dynamic sports. Peptide hormones, EPO, think about your endurance cyclists, think about your marathon runners. Human growth hormone, let's talk about weightlifters for argument's sake. There are other examples, of course, weightlifters, SNL. Uh, our stimulants, especially games, really good for, you know, uh, decision making, not necessarily decision making, but alertness and speed of reactions. Think about your tennis players, table tennis players, and your blood doping again. Let's, let's use the example of a marathon runner or a race walker, but an endurance performer would be, would be benefited here. Thank you.